In this video, we're going to look at a cool automation with lights in Home Assistant. Thanks to a car that I've sent the LED strip T1, which we'll be using in this video. I'm going to show you how you can create a complex automation like this one over here, step by step, so that we can mirror lights between Philips Hue via Home Assistant. So Home Assistant is going to read the Philips Hue light values and pass that information into a car thanks to our smart home. All of this is quite simple to set up once you've got Home Assistant set up. But if you're new to Home Assistant and you wanna get it set up, then follow my link in the description down below for my free Home Assistant course. Now go to your settings, click on your automations and scenes, click create automation, create new automation from scratch. We go and a trigger. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the state and then we're gonna look at the iMac lamp which is the name of the entity that i'm using so this is the uh, play bar philips hue play bar that's behind this imac over here and i'll be looking from off to on and i'm going to then go underneath in the actions tab and i'm going to call service and over here i'm going to be doing a light dot turn on here in the choose entity i'm going to pick the bookshelf which is this Akara T1 light strip. And we are all set up at this moment. I can save it and give this a name. So now that we've set up the most basic part of this automation, so as soon as the lamp will turn on, then the bookshelf will turn on. So that actually works quite well. Here's a dashboard. We've got the bookshelf, which is the Akara T1, and we've got the iMac lamp. So this over here is gonna uh, follow this. That's the idea. Let me turn this iMac lamp on and we can see that the bookshelf is turned on. Now, if I dial up the brightness, you can see nothing changes. Also, if I turn it off at the moment, it's still on. So we've got a couple more things to do in automation to make it better. So if I turn it on, you will also notice that the brightness doesn't match. Now in this step, we're gonna fix the brightness. So add trigger, we're going to use the state again. And if we scroll up, we can see that we've still got our existing one from before. So it's just created a different tab. You can minimize them over here. Entity, you need to pick the same entity because this is the entity that's driving everything. Um, and then when you go in attribute, we can actually pick from a list. Now, sometimes you might hit a bug where you actually can't pick anything else. So sometimes you get stuck, like you can only pick dynamics. You can see this automation I created before has brightness in it. Um, so if you can't pick it, you can just type it in uh, as such. So I'm just going to copy it from over here just to show you. So you can type it even if it doesn't appear in there, it still works. So if we save this now, now basically whenever the brightness of the iMac lamp changes, now this also will change, well it will turn on, but it's not going to uh, get the brightness setting yet. So if this actually is really not going to do anything. Let me demonstrate this for a second. So this is our current situation. So you remember that we said that if the iMac lamp turns on, the bookshelf turns on, the brightness still doesn't sync. But what we have done effectively, meaning that if we change the brightness, this will turn on. So if I change this brightness, for example, you see nothing happens. But if I turn it off, and now I change the brightness, technically this should come back on again. So let's add in the missing part. So we go in here and we need to now use something wacky or templating, which I have made an entire video about templating. If you're curious about it, I'll link it at the end of this video, but you're gonna need this uh, piece of code, which I'm gonna show you now. So if you go to the developer tools and template, you can actually experiment with your templating code. So this is a state attribute function. It's gonna look at a specific entity. This is the iMac lamp, so whatever entity that you're mirroring from. This is gonna be the attribute that we're looking for, which is the brightness. This basically converts it into an integer, so it's a whole number. So you can see it's 181, we really don't really need this. And now what this means is basically we're gonna be sending this 181 as a specific number back to via Home Assistant back to the Akara light strip. So this is the brightness uh, value. This is an attribute that you need to add under data over here. It should look something like this. So once you've actually enabled this, now you really can't go back to visual editor. Now this probably has changed in a recent Home Assistant release. I haven't updated yet, or it will probably change very soon. But anyway, you, you're now stuck with the uh, this YAML view, but that's fine. It doesn't really change anything. So now we've got this set up, we can give it a test. Okay, so I found a bug in my uh, code. 
We actually need brightness needs to be lowercase, not uppercase. So when we go back to our visual editor, ah, now the options are back again. So maybe it was a bit of a glitch on my system. So now that I have saved that again, we can go back to the dashboard. And if I change the brightness on the iMac lamp, let's do it now. Yeah, we can see it changing in the bookshelf. These are now in sync, which is good. So we're getting somewhere. So back to our automation. Now we want to add, we need to add two more things. We need to add the color and we need to add the fact that we need to turn the light off. And we can add the color quite uh, quickly. Again, two steps, very similar to the brightness. So we need to duplicate the trigger. So this time we want to look for the, not the brightness, but the RGB color or any uh, way you want to do this. If the RGB color changes on the iMac lamp, now this will actually trigger this call service. And because in the call service over here, we haven't actually got, because we've only got the brightness here, we haven't got the color, it won't actually sync yet. But if we go back to our templating over here and we change this to RGB underscore color, the American English color without the U if you're British. And then because it's not an integer, we need to remove this integer part. And now you can see this array 8460 six and two five five. Those three values are the values that we're going to need to pass to Akara. So go inside here, put it in YAML. Ensure that you're aligned to the brightness and here you can put RG, RGB underscore color. Okay, we're gonna have the same thing with this pipe and we can literally copy, well, you can either copy what you had from your templating um, tab, if you still got it open, or if you've missed that, because you skipped around in the video, I'll show you again. So just take the int out, change brightness to RGB color. Now these should be the same across like all light entities in Home Assistant, but you can double check in the states section you can uh, filter for the entity at the end, you can find the actual name of the attribute, you'll find it here on the, on the right hand side. So now that's set up, if I save, and I go over to iMac lamp, and we switch the color, um, pick this pink, put the brightness up, you can see that the pink updated instantaneously. I can't unfortunately move this around to actually show you it changing, but I'll do it again. So change the color here, go back, and you can see the color changing. So now the RGB color is working. One more thing to do is the turning the lamp off. So you can see that it's still on. Now you could very quickly do another automation that just looks at the state uh, from on and off, and then turn the bookshelf light off, which is pretty simple automation to build. Or if you want to be a little bit more advanced and do it in one automation, then I'm going to show you a way that you can actually do it. Also, we're gonna be using a cool new feature, which is copy and paste, I quite enjoy. So in our automation here, we're gonna add in another action. So what we're going to actually do, we're just gonna disable this existing action and we're gonna create a completely new one. So we go, gonna go to choose and we can have two options. Now I'm sure there are multiple ways of doing this. This is the way I'm doing it. Let me know in the comment section down below if you think there's a better way of doing it or an easier way. But I think it's quite like easy to understand. So the condition basically is going to say, I want to know what's the state of the iMac lamp. So basically if the iMac lamp is off, so when this automation gets triggered, if the lamp is off while it gets triggered, then I want to call service and I want to do a light dot turn off and I'm going to pick my bookshelf lamp save. So basically I'm choosing between one action because I've only got one. So I'm only doing one thing. Option one is confirm iMac is off. So once it's confirmed it's off, what are we doing? We're turning the bookshelf off. Um, at this stage, do you think um, anything has changed in your automation? Do you think it would work? Maybe pause a second and have a think. So I'm clicked add default action. And in this action over here, I'm going to be adding in the existing action that we had over here. So what we can do is just go and three dots, cut. You can see it's disappeared. Click add action. Now, right at the top, you'll see paste call service. We're pasting what we had before, and then we have this as our default. So our default for this automation will be that it will check if it's on. So if we go back and test it again, we turn it on, it comes on. We move the light, it, you know, it updates it, move it again, change color quickly to blue. It changed color and we turn it off. 
and it turns off. So you can see that now we have completed an automation that might have been tricky to do if you're trying to do it in one go and you're not that experienced in Home Assistant, but you can actually get it done if you just do step by step and use dashboards and obviously your eyes because you probably have these lights with you to test them out. If you don't have the lights with you, then you can just use the dashboard to visualize them moving at the same time while you're at your desk work. Now there's a slightly different way to do it. I um, actually used two options instead of using the default options. This might be easier to read because you can see like option one. So if the lamp is off, then I'm actually looking for, and I'm gonna do the turn off, which is fine. And if the lamp is on, then I'm gonna do this turning on with the color and the brightness. So I hope you got value out of this video and you found that interesting. And this is a use case that you can apply in your own smart home. If you did, please like this video and subscribe, you really uh, help me out and support the channel. If you got to this part of the video, I'm sure you got some value out of it. So please, please smash that like button. Thank you very, very much. I'm gonna leave you my next automation video over here. You'll find it here. See you in that video, ciao.